Hey, what's up guys, TJ here. Today I'm coming at you with five things that'll help you get out and have a better time on your snowboard. All right guys, the first thing I wanna talk about is something that I'm actually legit bummed about if I forget at home, and that is just a power bank. These are the two that I use the most. I like to have a bigger one for larger devices and you can charge your phone multiple times, as well as a smaller one that I can just keep in my pocket. I definitely would consider at least having a smaller one that you can fit in your pocket to just keep your phone charged up. You never know when you're gonna come across a cool spot that you wanna get a photo of, or if you're out there riding with friends and you wanna catch something on video or get a photo for your friend. Or even if you need to make a phone call, I've experienced a lot that I've pulled my phone out and it's just been so cold that my phone turns off. So if you have a power bank in your pocket, plug into your phone, even in that really, really cold weather, I've never had my phone just turn off because of that. So uh, first one that I think is crucial is just having a power bank. The second thing is something that hopefully most of you already have, but surprisingly enough, I see tons and tons of people out there without it. And that's just gonna be having a high quality face mask. Whether it's midwinter or you're snowboarding in the summer or spring, um, I wear a face mask full year round. My personal favorite is just a balaclava style face mask like this guy right here from Blackstrap. It has a hinged mouthpiece, so it's really easy to pull up over your nose or pull down below your mouth if you're trying to get a sip of water or talk to your friends. Obviously, there's tons of variations of these face masks, but uh, that's my personal go-to. It's gonna protect your face from the cold wind and the elements as you're bombing down groomers. You know, maybe it's snowing a little bit, maybe it's raining a little bit, or even just protecting it from that cold air, as well as the sun. And uh, the sun protection really comes in handy if you're riding in the spring or the summer, uh, which is why I actually wear the face mask year round. Third thing, and this is probably my favorite actually, is just having a decent mid layer. You know, when you're out there snowboarding, the conditions are changing throughout the day. Maybe it's colder in the morning and hotter in the afternoon, and you don't want to be uncomfortable in either situation. So, having a decent mid layer, you can be comfortable throughout the entire day. Rock it under your hoodie in the morning, throw it in your backpack in the afternoon, and you're set. Personally, I wear the Arcteryx Atom LT, although you'll see uh, most brands make some kind of functional tech mid-layer, Dekine, Burton, Analog, 686, whatever the case may be. I would just recommend getting one that has venting on the sides. If you get one that's just fully padded all the way around, you're probably gonna be too hot, even on a really, really cold day. So having that venting on the sides is just gonna be better for dynamic activities like snowboarding. And if you do plan on wearing it underneath um, hoodies or jackets, I'd recommend getting one without a hood. That way you're not wearing like three hoods while you're snowboarding. The fourth thing, again, something hopefully most of you guys have already thought about, but just being prepared for low light and high light situations with your goggles. I prefer to kind of just look at the forecast for the day and choose one goggle that's gonna be best for the entire day, whether that's my low light or high light solution. If you're looking for a goggle that comes with low light and high light solutions built in, you can check out Dragon goggles. They're all gonna come with two lenses as well as Smith goggles. Most of those come with two lenses. I just don't want any of you guys to get stuck out there on like a really low flat light day with dark black goggles and you can't even barely snowboard because you can't see the contours in the snow. So uh, definitely be prepared for both low light and high light situations. Number five is something that I think is hugely underrated, something every snowboarder should have in their kit. And that's just a simple Phillips head number three screwdriver. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's a Phillips number three. That should work for pretty much any screw on your snowboard binding. That way you can make sure your bindings are set up, everything's tight and snug and adjusted so when you get out there on snow, you can just go. Don't be that guy that shows up on the hill and then realizes that their binding's a little bit loose or it's not quite adjusted properly, then has to go to the ski shop, wait in line or make their friends wait for them or use one of those screwdrivers that are connected to the bench by those metal cables that are just super irritating to use. Just get your snowboard kit, dial it homes so when you show up on the hill you're ready to go i guarantee you that it'll come in handy real quick i've got a few bonus things for you guys don't get caught out there without a belt personally i rock an arcade belt it's stretchy it's comfortable it's got a quick like seat belt latch function and it's going to hold your pants up while still being comfortable 
In my opinion, you also wanna have lots of snowboard socks. I have like seven or eight pairs right now, but they're just gonna to help to keep your feet drier, warmer, and more comfortable in your boots out there, regardless of the conditions that you're in on any given day. At the bare minimum, I would get an acrylic snowboard sock and a wool snowboard sock for uh, warmer and colder days. If you're out there snowboarding a lot, I think it's definitely worth investing in a tune kit as well, or at least the bare minimum. So a gummy stone, a diamond stone, wax and iron, and a scraper. That way you can at least keep your board tuned up to a level where you feel confident and safe out there regardless of the conditions. It sucks when you're out there riding rails and you know you have burrs in your edges and you're just like waiting to catch an edge. So have a gummy stone, have that diamond stone, and you might as well wax your own snowboard as well so you can keep your speed and stay fast while you're out there. Having a bunch of beanies is always good as well. Not only so you can change up the color, but so you can have lighter ones and more heavyweight ones depending on the conditions. And the last thing I really hope most of you guys already have and wear, but if not, I encourage you to wear it full time anytime you get out there on your snowboard. And that's just gonna be a helmet. I wear the Sandbox Classic 2.0, have been for like six years now. Simple, functional, protects your head and your brain. Wear a helmet. Oh.